So then, we are back with more understandings from the time of the Second Tabernacle Services, where we find in the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Itzayelic lineage. So then we can understand the time of the end, per Yeshiahu, the prophet. We have then understand the time of restoration. And along with it, obviously, understand the Quran. And then determining what the future then holds as far as time-wise. We hear and read a lot these days on the internet regarding then many projects of the future. But let's try set a limit of a time per the instructions. So then, the Messiah was the most important person that was ever born in this planet. He was born then in 4999. How do we know this? Because the computer was able to calculate via then the known eclipses, lunar eclipses, lunar view of every month. We have those records. And then there is also the recording of the great star and also the census of the time. And obviously, the time where then the angel would say then the Messiah would come. There are many factors were then were placed in the computer and the computer was able then to calculate when the Messiah was born. So it's no longer a mystery. He was born in 4999 of the Tishri would be equivalent of our September mid-month first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Thus the Messiah came and tabernacled with his people. So then, since we understand when he was born, then we can set our clocks and our calendars as per. So then, he was born in 4999. He was placed on a pole 5032. We are then 7013. Let's then make the calculation properly. The Messiah then, when he went to Samaria, he went up on Mount Gerizim, the mountain of the favor. If you read then the Vrayim or Deuteronomy, you find then Mount Ebal, where those who were cursed, and then Mount Gerizim, those who were favored. The Messiah then came on top of the Mount Gerizim as the mountain of the favored, because he was the favored one. So then, he was there up on a mountain. He then transfigured himself, showed up to him in his spirit, Moshe and Eliyahu. Then the laws and the prophets. Then he received the okay to then to open the seals. That was the main purpose of then Moshe and Eliyahu coming to him. He was then the worthy lamb. He wasn't the savior yet. So let's understand per time and per season there is a specific title given for a specific time. As we understand, we've come out of the time of the seat from 6009 to 7009, the thousand years of the seat, where then there was the world's new world order. Because there was no tabernacle. So the Messiah was there on the top of Mount Gerizim. He opened the seals... And then he came down, and then he spent time with the Samaritans for two Yom creation days. 5032, then he was placed on a pole. We can understand the Messiah then when he left Mount Gerizim and went back to Jerusalem, he was destroyed. He was placed on a pole. So then the calculation is the Messiah spent two days. What he was saying is this. He was given the Gentile level, 2,000 years. You find then, during these 2,000 years, you find then the Messiah already establishing his tabernaclings. Then you find tabernacling, transitioning from the first and second tabernacle services. Then you find a transitional time of 100 years roughly. Then you find then 
tabernacling established. Yohanan then with the first holy city and then the other seven cities of Asia Minor were straightened out. Thus started the relationship with Gentiles and tabernacling. Then these relationship went up to 6009. So 6009 then the tomb was destroyed and Jerusalem was leveled. It was the first time in history where the tomb was destroyed. So then from then on was a thousand years of deceit. Scoundrelized scripture. Shortly after came Constantine. Then he changed the entire understanding of the scripture. And this is what's mostly known throughout the world. Because during the thousand years of deceit, they scandalized the scripture in the entire world. But then, during this time also was included the two thousand years. So we are yet during the thousand years of the second thousand, where then ended in 2009. So I understand then ends in 2009. No longer deceit. Devil does not exist anymore. What does exist is dragon. The world has shifted from devil to dragon. Time of precision. So then, how do we calculate? He was placed on a pole 5032. 2,000 years later would place us in 7032. What year are we are? We are at 7013. So do you understand the calculation? This means 7032 is the very maximum where then the time given to the Gentiles then ends. We have to understand the holy instructions for what they are. They are for a specific purpose and they are for this age. Tabernacling is forever. We are going to be tabernacling even after the earth is then restored. But then the calculations regarding then Gentile level related with tabernacling in this age, there is an end. Ends in 7032. So then, let's make sure then the countries and nations, they understand how far this planet was set for. 7032 is the very maximum. There is no longer meaning of prophecy beyond 7032. We already over the 7th thousand for a very short time. So then we are Obviously, transitioning ourselves from deceit back to precision. That's the time of the dragon. So then, there are many countries around the world making plans and trying to be environmental conscientious. And they try to shift then from regular resources such as then coal or then petroleum. And they want to have this clean energy. It's nonsense. Absolutely nonsense. We were not to be concerned with the environment. It does not mean you should throw garbage in the ocean. It does not mean you should throw garbage in the river. It does not mean you should contaminate the water stream. You have to use a basic understanding the way you were brought up. At least with the basics you understand. Garbage there is a place for it. But then the environment, as far as coal, as far as petroleum, we are not to be concerned with those. We use those as available energy to prepare the world during this time of restoration for the autumn feast. There is no longer this situation, oh, because in 50, or then in 54, or 2050, 2054, there is no 50. The maximum is 32. So when we calculate when the Messiah was born, the time he spent with the Samaritans, indicating tabernacling went out of the normal of Jerusalem, the Messiah became a living Jerusalem, 
or then the understanding where tabernacling was at. He became the living tabernacling. And he gave the Gentiles 2,000 years. So then from 5032, then we understand 7032 is the maximum. It can't go no longer. Otherwise the scripture would be out of balance and it can't be. So let's understand where we then start understanding our resources and how we should use them. The climate as we understand today won't be the same the next five years. The glaciers are going to melt very fast, extremely fast. And when the Chinese system becomes available, the demand for crude and energy is going to be absolutely, in quote, astronomical. There won't have time for environmentalists to get in this situation. They're going to stay out of the situation, in fact. It doesn't mean that people should throw oil in the ocean. It does not mean that people should then contaminate the rivers. Or then indiscriminately destroy then the ocean resources. The basics must remain. But as far as the usage of petroleum, we must use petroleum and we must use coal. Those resources were then set aside for this time. We can't outsmart what the Creator has given us. We are trying to complicate ourselves further by not using the availability of the energy given. We must use those energies given and forget these environmental situations. As far as this production of energy, we have to use coal. Coal is the most available, ready to use mineral or then similar sources such as petroleum for generation of energy or then natural gas. But if you read the instructions, then the Creator does not mention conserving the planet because the planet is going to be destroyed. So during this time where there is a restoration going on, we should use what we have. Coal is absolutely available. There are places in our planet people don't even have electricity yet. Then we understand when the Chinese system becomes available, nations around the world are going to start ordering. Because the knowledge of computer, and then what Daniel said from the angel, knowledge would increase for the purpose of trade. We are speaking with a tradesperson. Daniel at the moment, when he was speaking of knowledge, was of the moment. And knowledge would increase. Was he speaking of tabernacling? No. He was speaking of the Gentile level. You don't use knowledge when you are tabernacling. You use the word tabernacling. In the holy language, when you make a reference of tabernacling, you use tabernacling. Because the whole reference point of existence of tabernacling is tabernacling itself. You refer either of the prophets or the holy instructions. When you understand knowledge, you understand from the viewpoint of Daniel speaking as a politician. Knowledge then would increase. So what can we expect? Remote places of this world... For instance, forests or Amazon or then the islands of the Pacific, those people, they are going to become very quickly educated. There's going to have a lot of people over there in simple boats going over there distributing computers for those people. At the center of the island over there, they're going to find a central area where they're going to receive from space a link of the internet. 
and they are going to start investing their resources in the system. Simple as ABC. And they understand with the system of Windows is very easy. And then you can imagine emails being sent around the world and then when they order their parcels they want to have those parcels delivered. Then you can understand more movement of freighters and then delivery of packages. You can expect then simple ports but built up and constructed very nicely. So the people of the islands can receive what they ordered. So knowledge would increase. We are during this time of increasing of knowledge. What Daniel said was the starting point of the dragon period is starting with the peak of knowledge. If you do a study, there was a huge peak of knowledge in 08, 09. You find a huge peak of knowledge indicating the starting point of the period of the dragon. So then devil is erased, no longer exists. When you read in Revelation, the 20th chapter, or Galad, the 20th chapter, then you find a list of the many facets as a whole, understanding the end of it. The end of those names as a whole because the Messiah returned. Thus the rock that came from heaven and struck the statue. But during this time of restoration, we are during the period of time of the dragon. When the autumn feast starts, then starts the destroyer. So at the moment, the period of dragon, a period of precision, we have to educate ourselves and understand what's coming in the future. There is no longer the situation where you are going so far away in the earth and people are absolutely oblivious of what's coming. No, people are educating themselves. You can expect it. people from cities educating the people of the area how to use the basics of computer and then invest in their resources via a link with a bank where they can receive directly from space so let's try understand what this means because it helps the world then in line with what Messiah has said so we are not going to last more than 7032. So we should make the best usage of what we have and what was given until this period of time. That's why the Messiah has given a time limit so then the world can evaluate the resource and, and then use it as such. Why are we overcomplicating ourselves with alternative energies where you don't find in the scripture? It's a mere fancy of a group of people trying to do what they should not be doing. Because we don't find in the scripture preservation of the planet. The planet is going to be destroyed. It's set for destruction. Does it mean we should destroy before the time? No, we are not stupid. You don't contaminate your plate if you have to eat from it. But then the resources given we should use until 7032. And make the best out of it. So then, from this viewpoint... Let's make sure then we understand the engine of the system once again. We find in the Kingdom of the North, Soviet Union. Why do we say Soviet Union? Because at some point in the very near future, the Soviet Union that used to be is going to return. Because if you read the 11th chapter of Daniel, gives you the relationship of the Kingdom of the North, Soviet Union, and the Kingdom of the South. So then, the reason why they are going to become socialists 
It's because of production of equipment. The industry of equipment of the Northern Kingdom is going to be very big. More than the former. As far as military understanding, obviously they are going to be growing as such. But then the production of equipment is then via what China is leading then the way. So you find then the Chinese as socialists being the production. Countries no longer will be bothering China anymore. Then the northern kingdom becomes the right hand or the right hand person of China. Filtering through the entire world and only okaying those projects with 100% backed up by raw materials and transportation. Make sure the deals they stick and make sure then there is transportation and enough people working to make sure the line of the products are then backed up. Then we find the Kingdom of the South providing then the raw materials. So then based upon this understanding then you find the first section is providing China with enough energy to get the factory going. For instance we can expect then the Northern Kingdom providing ways of having more energy given to China. So then in exchange obviously then the Soviet Union produces more equipment. And they have the privilege obviously of having other areas of the world from the brick, the countries involved with development, of then managing these resources from these many areas of the world so then the factory can produce. So let's try to understand that we are not speaking of isolated nations anymore. We are speaking of a, an area of the world where there is factoring. The bulk of factoring. You find then a person making the plans. And you find areas where these plans must be backed up by raw materials. So then a system can be generated after this basic engine then is going. And as this engine then starts, then the nations they have roughly a couple of years, 36 months, to get their situation then lined up. Make sure their subsystem then is up to date. Backlogs then straighten out. Because they have to go through then a filtering system prior of starting then production. So then we lined up the entire world with what the Messiah was saying then in the future. And then the freighters of the earth. He was not speaking of countries anymore. He was speaking of freighters. He was speaking then the system of the freighting system leading the world's market and governments in line with the freighters. So then the world is starting to educating itself of what's coming in the future in order for these then to become reality. We must understand there is a short time until the system becomes available. You can expect direct pipeline from Soviet Union directly into China as they are speaking of. Petroleum, natural gas, coal, in order for the factory to become more productive. But then China can't have every situation being resolved by themselves. They have to focus in what areas of their country they should then expand to get the bulk then produced. But then you have to have a right-hand person making sure then the plans or products that must be then built must be backed up. 
because it has to have a calculation of how much energy it's going to take to produce this product. You have to understand raw materials, transportation. And China won't have any more time to do this. For instance, the ports that we know today around the world, they can't anymore be docking on the side, either you know the, the port side or, or starboard side. And then doing container by container. You know, from the area of 50s, those times are gone. It can't continue anymore. From a very large freighter, sea freighter, big ship, taking 20 hours then to unload 2,200 containers, it's absolutely ridiculous. And building huge ships of today's market with the 50s technology, it kind of, you know, it doesn't fit for our time. But when you then make modular, modular system of many containers, then you reduce the time. Then there is obviously a sorting area where then big trucks can take those huge models, those modules out of those ships, takes them to another area then for distribution. Because captains, they won't have any more time to spare. 20 hours for 2200 containers, it is absolutely an astronomical time. It's a waste of time beyond measure. If we understand what's coming in the future as system-wise versus the time that takes for a ship on a dock to do a work of 2200, 20 hours, can you imagine when the system quadruples overnight? The dockers over there, those people working with dockings, and those people working with cranes, they won't have time. They cannot work 24-7 in shifts. They won't get the job done. Not a chance in the world. It's going to have a ships, you know, a line of ships. They, will, <laughs> they won't have any time. That's why it's important to retrofit the ships with modules. Modules of containers. And then ports with drive throughs They have to work somewhere, some way in their ports, either divide the area of the port or make a trench in the center of it, where ships, they simply drive through, and then it comes, they refuel, they remove those modules out of their ships in two hours' time. By the time the crew of the ships, they go over there, they sit down, and they have their meal. By the time it gets finished up and then dishes washed, then they have to be on their way. Otherwise, then the world can't provide its demands. So a lot of situations coming in the future, but then are the nations being prepared? They are wallowing around during the time of a thousand years of deceit and they try to make a system to work where there is no plan. And the Messiah already gave the plan of the future. So can you imagine the simplicity of those ships no longer having those standard size containers guides every time you know a person the, the docker over there working on those cranes every time it has to line up each of them and a, a huge amount of those containers it's no longer profitable it's a waste of time must have an overhead crane where then it is removed the entire section of it and then unload and then reload. By the time the captain docks at the dock over there, then it's already, those modules are already waiting. 
The only point of it is remove a module, replace with another module, remove a module, replace with another module, loading and unloading, refueling and drive through. The situation of pilots going to the ship and then it has to have the docking procedures and then it has to have a tugboat and then it has to spin the ship around. Those areas are of the 50s. Those are outdated, must be gone. It does not mean they should not have a pilot, should have a pilot, obviously. But then in a drive-through situation where then two hours per ship would be the very maximum, speaking of container ships. Crude ships is another category. Maybe they should make modules of tankers. Rather than having a huge tanker as a unit, they should make modules in a tanker where you can remove as modules. You remove the entire module of the front of the ship and then simultaneously on the back to distribute the removal of load. And then you make as those big ships rather than an entire unit, you find them modules. You remove the entire module, goes on the top of the truck, goes to the distribution center. There it gets distributed. And then they place the empty module back in the ship. The pace of the world thus far is from the 50s. As technological as we can think of, but then when you evaluate the procedure, it's very archaic. This is from 50 years ago plus. When islands and nations, they're going to start ordering their products, they have to order it fast. And the ability is if they order next day air, the package should be there next day air. They have to provide a way of either a boat or drop by aircraft. Boat is more than likely what should be done. But then the docks must have enough space and they should be very in line with the end of times way of trade. And thus far this trade of ours is very archaic. Container by container have to line up each of them. Taking each container one by one at a time, it's crazy. So retrofit the ships very quickly and make sure they are ready to go. However, then the ports must update themselves. Make sure the ships, they drive through as you would when you get a sandwich. And the best place on the planet to have these understanding then set in place would be the Panama Canal. Because the Panama Canal already is then extended in a such a way where then they can have a side of the harbor over there or the canal for loading and the other side for unloading. It could become then the Singapore of the Americas. If they put their heads to work, they should make then Panama the Singapore of the Americas. Because it unites then the ability of going through the Panama Canal from the Atlantic to the Pacific and vice versa, and at the same time, a terminal of containers. Because the Mashiach, he's ahead of us. He's way over there in the future indicating this is what's going to take place. You have to update yourselves. What you're doing over there on the past is very archaic. You have to update your ports, update your system of distribution. So please stay tuned. Much more coming up.